We've got another VHS top loading VCR to have a look at today. This time, National NV7200. Let's take a look around it. On the front, you can see there are no mechanical buttons anymore. It's all electronic, including the eject. And it's now got review and cue modes. So you can watch while fast forwarding and rewinding. There's pause, still advance. Instead of that quick slow thing we saw on the other one, there's audio dub. There's a small panel down here where it has the tracking control, selection for the video input, whether it's the camera input connector or tuner. There's also a microphone input there. Then over here there's a flap and that's got a Dolby noise reduction. It's got a what is that? Times half times two? I don't know what that does. Maybe that's a fast slow thing. We'll have to try that out if we can get this thing going. Then clock controls and it's still got these latching push button style power and time record buttons but now the VTR TV control is just a button I think unless that's broken and instead of them mechanical switches for the tuner. It's now got up and down buttons and the tuner is the same type there that we saw last time that uses the variable resistors to set the reference voltage. Let's have a look on the back. It's got the normal aerial connectors, power and then the audio and video out connectors. Let's take a look inside this thing and then we'll power it up and see if it works. Think it. I think it works. The information I have says that it mostly worked last time it was tried, but that was about four or five years ago now. Probably five years ago. Uh, does it have to be ejected in order to get that off? Nope. Some of them do, and that's a real bother when it doesn't power up properly. So there'll be some screws down here. It's a little bit further down. Alright. Oh, it's just the top bit that opens. Uh, yes, it's this older style where the chassis is all plastic, including the covers. And yeah, there's a base part, which is also plastic, which stays. Why well, I thought the cover didn't move. Oh, look at that. There's a battery there. I wonder if we should get rid of that before it leaks on everything and wrecks it. I think it's that. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's already kind of wrecked. You can see there on the terminals that the battery goes that well on the wires from the battery Corrosion has gone the whole way down the the battery wires and is now going into the board so That's not very good and we need to get rid of this wonder if that's newer since it says Panasonic National on it or it's just international marked I guess anyway that's got to go well the damage is already done probably this is on the side there make sure the positive and negative terminals of the battery are aligned properly do not use other type of battery do not short circuit or disassemble do not dispose in fire all the usual things okay so there's a cover here that covers over the the head and okay this mechanism looks quite similar to what we saw in the other machine so maybe the only change they've made is now it's electronic eject I wonder how they do that it's probably just another position on the loading motor that brings it a bit further over okay let's power it up and see what happens you can see there the power comes on and that is just a momentary button now, it's not a switch that stays latched in to select VTR TV, which is how the modern VCRs work. So once you start playing a tape, it'll automatically put it into VTR mode for you, which is convenient, and then you can switch that off when you want to go back to watching TV. Seems like that's part of the loading mechanism. Okay, we'll try this tape husk. Huh, 
that's weird. The pinch roller didn't come all the way in. Oh, there you go. Maybe it was just stiff. Is it detecting that the supply reel is not moving? Maybe. If we stop. Yeah, so I guess it's got a protection in case the tape snapped or not working. Some take up. Fast forward. So I guess they're sensing the rotation of that. Interesting. It wasn't like that in the other machines, was it? I guess we should get a video output connected up so we can see what what this thing does. And everything's getting buried. So much stuff everywhere. It's because the computer's changed. That's why. There you go. Oh, interesting. The captured image looks a lot better than what it shows up as on my screen. Well, it's not doing too well though, is it? It's... <laughs> See, look look what it shows up here. It's got all these lines all over it. So it's in sort of working condition. The fast forward while playing. It's a bit lumpy. And rewind while playing. It is a still a two head. So if we push this half button, yeah, it's, it's did that change that? Yeah, the times two button makes it go faster. Or well, it stays like that until you push play again, and then the half button makes it go at half the speed. But the picture is so bad when doing those things; it's almost non-existent. Probably if this thing was tuned up in good working order, the picture might be a bit better. But that's interesting to see that. And similarly, the pause is quite bad. Because it's just two heads, it can't align properly with the tracks when it's in pause or other modes, other fast or slow modes. But it's sort of working, which is quite good for an old machine like that. I'm guessing capacitors have leaked and wrecked something in the video circuit. That's the most likely thing that's happened to it. Let's take a look under the front cover and under the bottom and see what sort of boards and things this has in it. I'm guessing the boards will be pretty similar to the previous machine, previous top loading machine. Alright, here's what you see under the front panel. Look at that. Infrared remote receiver. Very discreet compared to the modern ones where everything is all just in one chip. Now it's got the receiver and I think there's a SIL package I see there to do demodulating the variable resistor and various other parts. What a nice shielded box. There's the older style big tactile switches. Some chip, probably some keyboard scanning thing. The mechanical tape counter, the belt driving it, comes off the, the take up reel. Uh, there's a different type of switch for that half and two times speed. That's the Dolby switch counter memory. Then there's the clock stuff over here. Still the older type of um, VFD with the formed glass rather than flat plates. Very good. I've got a better camera now for those close-up views. Just a little bit of an upgrade over that cell phone that we were using before. A bit clearer. Now let's take off the bottom and see what's under there. Or we'll see what's inside the bottom. Presumably it will have a board covering the whole bottom side like what we saw in the other machine that will fold out for easy servicing. I think this is the last of those four digit part numbered national VCRs that I've got to look at. I think so, which means perhaps next time we'll be looking at the NV2 
250 maybe 250 280 then 300 I think that's the plan might be interdispersed with some other bits and pieces since some various other cameras and things have showed up that we'll probably want to take a look at look at that we have got a big board in there it's got bent guess the wires looks like probably the motor driver there heatsink on it it is quite similar to the other machine we looked at last time with the that sliding door with the video inputs on the front and then the shape of these boards underneath it's very similar because I remember now it's got that other screw there which is a uh, going into metal rather than these other ones which are going into plastic okay so it's probably just a slightly upgraded design so it has to push back to release it from the front here where the those connectors and things go through the front then it will hinge up and is there a way to hold it and do it from the hinges okay bits of hair in there uh, because everything's been landing on this board and now we've tipped it upside down because the mechanism is slightly different to what we saw before it also has this extra board which I don't think was in the other machine to insert a picture if I remember so that's interesting there's additional solenoids here which I don't think were in the other one maybe this adds the additional features required to do queue and review modes perhaps but otherwise it's quite similar to that other mechanism which is also quite similar to what I remember from the NV3000 which has this multiple pulleys thing to get the loading motor over to here into the mechanism and capstan motor there and the head drum motor with the load being driven by ICs up there the mode switch the motor for the reels oh, okay there's a fair bit of fluff on the legs of capacitors unfortunately so it's a little bit gone I guess it would need recapping in order to get that working again the lights come from the wrong angle isn't it that yeah there's a lot of fluff under that capacitor leg there and similarly on the other capacitor legs fluff on the capacitor legs and the others had I saw like that one there there's little green dots of corrosion so that's unfortunate and it'll be similar up on this board The interesting motor driver gets its own heatsink screwed onto it there you can see the shape of the IC there in the center it's got notches out of the end so you can fit screws there to hold a plate or a heatsink onto it so that's servo on the left side there and on the right side is the video processing interesting they mount that delay line on an angle like that guess that's so that it fits down in the gap off the corner of the capstan motor there interesting and look at the back of the mechanism solenoids added loading motor stuff and a leaf switch there pushed quite hard yeah so this board hinges up there is a hinge part along there and there's some clips down here oh there's just one um, cable clip clamp thing there just wondering if there was any writing on this system control okay so that's system control board so there must be some uh, main microcontroller CPU thing various other logic with a bunch of transistors and various logic ICs and then under that we can see there's the tuner board there and then above that down there is the uh, the clock counter timer thing oh, and also the channel setting stuff will be there you could put a right angle RCA connected to bring that coax in so it just clips into place and I'll put that hinge back on so it works because there's a notch there so you can if you put the this side here on first then you can hook into the other side 
and that will hinge down nicely. So why was that bulging up in that area? It's because these wires come through there, I think. Depending on how they're laying, it pushes up on the board. Alright, we'll stick it back together. Okay, yeah, the wires push the board up a bit. It's pretty clean. Only very few bits of dust fell out of it. I guess it's been in a clean environment all its life. Reasonably clean, not all full of dust and hair and things. Great, perfect VCR. Sort of working still, without any work being done on it. It's not chewing tapes yet. That's nice. Just gotta watch this thing, because that side screws to plastic, this side screws to metal, so there are different screws used there to retain it. Metalwork's got part numbers on it, part numbers on the metalwork, then the model identifier, part numbers on that metalwork, part numbers on all that stuff, and made in Japan, part numbers. And just as before, if you want to take this cassette loading mechanism out, or as we saw on the other previous top loading machine, you undo the red screws only, not the ones that are painted, and then you can lift this out. And there's some instructions on how to do that there. For dismounting the cassette stand, do the following. Followings. Four red screws. Lift up the left side. Well, disconnect the connection rod to the flank. Yeah, so that goes over to that soft eject mechanism thing there. So that needs to be disconnected. And then yeah, it can just lift out. And if you do undo these painted screws, then you have to do a realignment before it can be used again. So don't do that, unless they're absolutely necessary. We'll just try this one more time. Although the video output's disconnected, but anyway, we can see it doesn't work. It seems like the first time after you power it up, it doesn't bring in that um, the, the pinch roller for some reason. There you go, it's fine this time. So we saw the first time we tried to turn it on, did the same thing, didn't pull in the pinch roller. But I guess that could be the result of the leaked capacitors on that system control board that was down there. That's likely to cause some sort of random weird issues. But anyway, it's generally in working order. Now you can hear there, when we push the review or Q buttons, various solenoids operating. And I can see there's parts moving down there, so those additional solenoids added, I think, would be to add those functions. And yeah, also the solenoid that operates the pinch roller, because it's not part of the normal, just fixed loading mechanism. Great! So there you go, that's a look at the National NV7200 VHS top loading VCR. Still in mostly working order after all this time, but capacitors leaking uh, is going to ruin it, unfortunately. Anyway, stay tuned. Next time we'll take a look at either another VCR or another camera or some other thing.